Welcome back to another Bali COVID-19 update. This is for August 25th, 2021. And let's start with the restrictions. And so, as expected, the restrictions have been extended to August 30th. And the government noted a downturn in cases, but uh, said that everybody needs to remain vigilant. Parts of Java have been moved from level four to level three and Bali remains at level four. So what does that mean? Well, Indonesia to allow restaurants, shops to reopen in Jakarta, Bali, according to this article down below. Uh, so the president announced that places of worship, restaurants and malls will be allowed to operate. So starting Tuesday, be a partial reopening of restaurants, shopping malls and places of worship in some areas, including the capital of Jakarta and the holiday island of Bali. Places of worship and restaurants will be allowed to operate at 25% capacity, while shopping malls will be allowed to operate at 50% capacity in those areas. But Bali is always a little different from other places. And so I'm waiting to see what the governor is going to say. But we're, so we're still at level four. And what does that mean? Let's go over that because I haven't mentioned that in a while. So level four is more when there's more than 150 COVID cases. Uh, per week, more than 30 hospitalized COVID patients and more than five deaths per 100,000 people per week. So if we take five deaths per 100,000, that's 50 deaths for a million. Let's say we've got 4.3 million, 3.2 million here. So 50 times four, 200. So we're, we're still over that. And of course we're over the 150 COVID cases. So, um, Level three is 50 to 150 cases, 10 to 30 hospitalizations, and two to five deaths per 100,000. So uh, we may be getting closer. The numbers have been going down again this week, and so that's good news. And so who knows where we're gonna end up by, uh, by Sunday by, and by Monday, by the, well, Sunday when I talk, and Monday at the end of the restrictions. Uh, maybe we'll be able to move to level three, who knows? So we're at level four. So um, what does that mean? Well, uh, supposedly, uh, and what's on paper and what's happening in real life, two different things. Uh, so 25% of students are supposed to prepare for national assessment from 24th of August to 2nd of September. Okay, I haven't heard anything from my granddaughter's teacher and today's the 24th. So. Um, don't know what's happening there. Um, malls um, still closed except for supermarkets and, and pharmacies and takeaways and that's probably going to be changed by the governor. Uh, we'll see the over 70s. Uh, are they still banned or are they not banned? Okay, uh, according to the president's Directive they are, but that may be changed. Uh, we don't know um, under 12 still banned Restaurants are still closed with the exception of open seating areas uh, For or for takeaway or delivery and so uh, if you watch any of the YouTube videos You see restaurants are open all over here. Uh, I've seen in the last yesterday restaurants open uh, in Munduk in Lovina at night, not in the daytime. You saw my video the other day. We were there, there was nothing open. We're gonna go on Sunday again, but a little later and see if they're open. Um, <clears throat> Changu, of course, everything's open, Ubud. Um, so restaurants are working. And I, I'm assuming that's because, you know, they while they've got a roof on, uh, it's open. Um, so there's lots of air there. So I guess that's how restaurants are taking that. Uh, religious uh, uh, worship remains at 50% or 50 people. Public areas still closed. Wedding reception still banned. We'll see what's going to happen. In other words, there's nothing really much has been changed here. Uh, life is going on as it is. As I've said before, uh, enforcement has gotten lax in, in some areas. In some areas it's still tight. People are trying to survive. and. Mask wearing, okay, I was out this morning with uh, my granddaughter and most people had masks on. Still completely different than two months ago when everybody had masks on. I say most 
the overwhelming majority. I don't like making up percentages um, because people do this all the time and what well, they just pull them out of the air. But uh, easily, um, the overwhelming majority were wearing masks. But there were people that came across today that were not wearing masks. Uh, so yeah, we're getting lax there. Okay, so that's it. Uh, restrictions still on as expected, but nothing's really changed. Okay, let's go on to numbers and some good news. Okay, and so we know restrictions have been extended, um, but what about the, <clears throat> the numbers? And we're gonna talk about the numbers specifically. Indonesia's daily COVID-19 tally returns to pre-Delta levels, according to this article. And so these, we've got the lowest daily tally uh, in more than two months with figures returning to levels before the Delta variant began to take over in Indonesia. So far, nearly 89 million citizens have received at least the first dose and 31.6 million have been fully vaccinated. And Jakarta is the best vaccination rate in the country um, with 54% of the nation's capital already fully vaccinated. And here in Bali, we're working our way up to that quickly. However, in East Java, only 14% of the population has been fully vaccinated, and Central Java at 12.5% uh, fully vaccinated, uh, or below the national average, which has already reached 14%. Vaccination shortages and distribution problems across the country, and you know we're an archipelago, you've got to go from island to island. Um, logistics have kept uh, targets at bay on Sunday, health authorities could only administer a little over 700,000 doses and the plan was to do 2 million a day starting in August and so yeah we're not there but good news um, numbers are coming down we're back to the pre-delta levels which is great so how did the numbers look today not too bad um, good we're still below a thousand the seven-day average for new positive cases has gone down a bit to 801 and the seven-day average for deaths has gone down. This is the first time in um, a week uh, and it's down to 60 a day now. In Indonesia, there are 19,106 new cases and 1,038 deaths. So getting close to being below 1,000 on the deaths and we're still below 20,000 on the new cases. Individuals tested uh, yesterday, 123,800 with 15.4% positive rate and the seven day average is 16.3%. So the average below 20. And vaccinations in Bali, uh, 3,142,713, That's the, the first dose. The second dose is 1,660,880, 38.5%. Uh, wow, okay. So, yeah, those are positive. And so what about the actual numbers? Uh, new positive cases, 934. So we're still below 1,000. Now this is a little, this jumped from yesterday. So we're kind of going back and forth here so you really have to look at the average the seven day average to get a, a better sense of where we're at and the seven day average as i said has dropped some um okay and so recovery is 968 deaths 44 okay that's good well it's not good but it's better than it has been recently and active cases 8,736 so that is good um, we're getting down getting down getting down more recoveries than deaths as long as we get more recoveries more recoveries than new cases every day okay and of the 934 new cases all were Indonesians 752 were local transmissions, 171 from domestic travel and 11 from international travel. So we're seeing things go down um, and that's what we want to see. Let's take a look at the numbers by Regency. 
Tempest are 242, Badung 153, Guyana 120, Tabanan 100, Buleng 97, Jambrana 58, Klungkung 56, Bangli 53, and Karangasam 52. Okay, so the numbers are improving. What does that mean in terms of herd immunity? Um, remember we're talking about herd immunity, vaccination, 70%. Uh, well, here's something interesting that came out. I just saw this today. Lots of new stuff came out just this morning, but I just don't have time to, to deal with all of it today. But this one I wanted to, this is something Pak Luhut says about the uh, idea about herd immunity. So what about Pak Luhut? What did he say? Minister Luhut says herd immunity is difficult to achieve. So according to the Coordinating Minister for Maritime Affairs and Investments, Pak Luhut, um, and if we all know who he is now, he said emergency, uh, he said herd immunity is going to be difficult to achieve because of the emergence of the COVID-19 Delta variant. And he said, we are dealing with the Delta variant that does not allow us to achieve herd immunity. This has been brought up by the epidemiologist from Gajamata University and Arlanga University. And Lewis said, that the Delta virus is extremely contagious and because of that the efficacy of existing vaccines is only 60 percent and when I saw this I thought where is this number, number coming from 60 percent um, but then um, I came across an article on CNN um, talking about what they found a new study and for the Delta variant it the study showed 66%, so maybe that's where he's got his numbers. So, it's still working. It's the Delta variant because it's so contagious, um, not as good at stopping it. We know people are getting, that have been vaccinated are getting sick. It does protect against severe uh, infection, severe illness, and hospitalization and death. Still good at 66%. But people are still getting sick, even if they've been vaccinated. So Pak Luhut said that because uh, it's going to be difficult to achieve uh, herd immunity, the government is going to shift its strategy from achieving herd immunity to containing the virus by enforcing th the 3M. So the 3M health protocols of wearing a mask, maintaining distance, and washing hands regularly. And 3T tracing, testing, treatment, so, and restricting contacts. Okay, so is the government giving up on trying to eradicate this? Well, I talked about the, the difficulties with eradicating uh, COVID-19 in the last two videos. And so some countries, and, and there was a hint from the Prime Minister of Australia that they're going to switch their uh, their policy as well. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. I haven't seen any new news about that. Um, but that could be what we're going to see in a lot of places, a shift from trying to get rid of it completely to trying to control it uh, and keep it at small numbers and uh, in non-lethal numbers. Pak Luhut said uh, that expect by October or earlier the pandemic will be more controlled with the use of Paduli Lingdungi app vaccinations, tracing, testing, and strict health protocols. Okay, um, I don't know where October came from or before. Let's take a look at what's happening on the ground. Now, we know that the, the pandemic has affected people financially, there's people that are hungry, people that are getting handouts on a regular basis because they don't have jobs. They've been selling motorcycles and handphones, uh, trying to get by. Uh, guys that used to take tourists out in their fishing boats are back fishing for fish instead of fishing for tourists. Um, people are working out ways to, to get an income. Uh, I was talking to um, my son's neighbor and yeah, he sold his motorbikes. It's tough um, financially. What about mentally? Well, uh, tough mentally too. Um, 
all over the world. You'll see, if, if you look at the U.S., of course, it's crazy there all the time. People are doing nutty stuff. In Australia, I talked about the other day, the fights between police and demonstrators. Um, we're going to see more of that uh, as this extends, I think. And here in Bali, in Buling, we had an incident that went viral. When I first saw it last night, uh, I was pretty shocked. Cause so, uh, clash is triggered by personnel not accepting the head of Don Dim uh, being beaten. And so this happened in the, uh, the village of Siddhatapa in Banjar district up here in Buling. And so a clash occurred. Now the, the stories are different depending on who you talk to. If you talk to the military, there's one story. You talk to local people, there's another story. Um, I'm gonna go through uh, this, which has been reported. Uh, a number of people were hurt, um, not terribly seriously, uh, the kind of hurting you get in fist fights. And so what happened? Well, accordingly, according to the article, the military and uh, other personnel came to carry out some swab testing in Siddhatapa. When they were there, there were apparently some people that were not interested in getting that. And so what's the, what's the chronology of this? Well, uh, at 8 o'clock in the morning, a swab was, a test was carried out by members of the swab team from the Buluang Task Force along with health workers from Banjar uh, Health Center and um, village head and other people, uh, community leaders. At 9.45, when the swab test was running, two young people went by on a motorcycle not wearing a mask, and they went past the, the task force. The young men were stopped by a member of the team, um, but they did not want to stop. Instead, they bumped. Okay, now this is one, one rendition says that they bumped them with the, with the motorbike and the others didn't mention that. And uh, so <laughs> they were chased. They took off after they bumped the, this member of the task force. They took off and they were chased. And well, they got away. But they came back. And apparently, according to this, uh, um, one, of the, one of the people on the motorbike, one of the young guys in the motorbike said, what, what did you call me? And the, they were answered. Uh, why did you hit uh, one of us? And they took the two youths and to the Bulan commander for a swab test and they arrested the, the two young people. Upon which families of the two people came and they grabbed the young men to take them away uh, because they didn't want to have the swab test carried out. And so then the, the military grabbed them back and during all of this pushing and pulling, this is what it sounds like, so the commander was hit in the back of the head. Uh, seeing this, uh, members of the task force tried to secure the perpetrator, but because he resisted, uh, a fight broke out. And, well, the video is, well, there's, it's, it's not long. Uh, it's about 20 seconds, but there punches thrown and kicks. Um, and uh, somebody threw what looked like a, a can of something, um, or a wastebasket, I don't know. Uh, this fight broke out. The, the family uh, took the perpetrator home and it followed by um, military where they were going to carry out a mediation to solve the issue. Okay, that's a common way to solve things here. You get the two sides and you try to mediate and uh, come up with things and everybody shakes hands and everybody's okay. So the mediation was not accepted by the, the residents of the village. And so a report went to the police uh, and waiting for more um, comments from the village leaders and from the military and from the police and everybody else that's involved. This is becoming a, an issue. So while there's been no official statement from the village, uh, through social media, the, one of the victims, the villagers, said, People are being intercepted and forced to take swabs. I'm a victim of violence by arrogant officers. We are not terrorists. We are not thieves. The commander uh, has, not, has yet to make an official statement, and he went to uh, the police station last night, Bullying Police Headquarters, to file a report, and he said that he will make a statement after he's finished with the report.
So waiting to see what's happening. So what do we have here? Uh, you got some people who are hesitant, resistant to getting swabs. Um, you've got tensions going on because some people are unhappy. And uh, this is this is a situation where there's there's tension. Um, I hear it in the streets. Um, people are not happy with the situation the way it is. They want things to open up. Um, there's a lot of COVID denial going on. People have gotten the, the test because they've had to. And they, nobody wants to get the swabs, according to one person I talked to. It hurts. I don't want it. Uh, I don't need it. I'm not sick. So this is uh, hopefully this issue will be resolved quickly. Um, and we won't see any more incidents like this. Uh, we just have to hang in there and hope that we don't have any more of these unfortunate incidents. But uh, this is just to show that all is not um, peace and love here. Um, there, are, there are consequences of everything that's going on here, both positive and negative. Okay, so an update on the fight. Um, peace has been achieved so thank goodness so there was a, another there are more stories as i said this is getting huge play in uh, local media for good reasons uh, this is not something you want happening um, and so there were there were more on this side and more on that side uh, i'm not going to go into that since peace has been achieved so what happened uh traditional leaders and t e officers and police everybody got together and they decided after mediation they decided to bury the hatchet so to speak initially the mediation was conducted at the bull Lane police headquarters and that led to the peace agreement uh, local leaders however wanted to do this again in the village uh, so that everybody could see what was happening and so everybody moved to Siddhatapa village and uh, they convened at the Wantilan Pura Desa and there they discussed the, the mediation and with the ultimate conclusion of peace. And according to Colonel Ida Bagus Katut Surya Widana, um, he said that he's come to Siddhatapa to stop the problems and he said things have been resolved. Let's not bring this up anymore. Let's not talk about it we're good so excellent outcome uh, peace has been resolved again and let's hope nothing like this happens in the future but well I'll talk about this in a minute in the wrap-up and so we know that there's hard times in terms of employment and Bulaling uh, Bulaling job fair 2021 is going to be held virtually and the target is to uh, get 750 workers employed and so, unlike in the past, the, the Bulang job fair is going to be done online in order to not cause crowds uh, that are not in accordance with the health protocols. And so, this is going to be done through the official website of the Bulang Manpower Office. And the link is here. I can put it right on screen, I think. Yeah, I can. Um, and it's going to go on for seven days starting August 25th, 2021. So that starts today, started today. Good, okay. And 25 companies, 25 companies will be involved in the job fair that are engaged in services, education, retail, finance, and tourism. Participants are open to the public in all requirements related to job applications will be listed in on the official website of the Booling Manpower Office. So good news for job seekers in Booling, and I hope everybody that wants a job gets a job. Okay, time for a wrap up. Um, there's just so much stuff today. Uh, I didn't talk at all about the new vaccines coming in, and I'll talk about that on Sunday. I uh, just don't have time. When I get this done, it's already 2.30 in the afternoon and I have tons of other stuff to do. I've been working all day trying to figure out uh, my granddaughter's online schooling stuff. Uh, some of it pretty straightforward for me. Uh, the math, uh, kind of social sciences, uh, civics stuff, which I know about, Pachacila. Um, but some of, the, <laughs> some of the other 
subjects. Uh, whoa, okay, giving me a headache. Mm. Anyway, so what have we got? We got the positive things. The numbers are going down. Um, they're continuing to go down. There's some uh, some negatives uh, with that in that there's been reports that people are not reporting themselves when they're sick, that they stay home, that they don't want to get tested, they don't want to be put in a quarantine facility. And so are the numbers we're seeing real numbers? Um, do they really reflect what's going on uh, on the ground in the villages? Yeah, I don't know. Um, probably not, and I've discussed this before. Um, a lot of people don't want to be tested, uh, and we saw what happened in Bulang with that in the village. But let's take a look at, let's use the numbers that we've got here because that's what the government's going to be using. And so they're moving down. So uh, according to Pak Luhut, he said that, that uh, the PPKM level 4 status in a number of cities, including Jogja and in Bali, Bali's not a city, an island, um, will soon be dropped. He said he expects it to drop to level three within the next few weeks if there's continuous improvements. Uh, that's good news. Uh, if we see this, and I, I mentioned this before, uh, about going down to level three. Okay, what does this mean in terms of opening up? Um, well, are we going to open up for the B211s first um, and then work our way out to uh, to travel bubbles and then eventually full uh, a fully open um, country yeah that's not clear yet but uh, if you take a look at what I just talked about before with what Pak Luhut said about uh, switching the uh, government's policy from going from eradication to control uh, and he was mentioning by October so let's say that September is only what, a week away um, so, not happening in August, obviously. September, yeah, that doesn't seem likely as well. Uh, let's say we go down to, to level three in, in a, a few weeks. Okay, um, maybe by October, um, that's a possibility, but, uh, again, um, you don't know what's going to happen here with, with, well, one with the, the Delta variant and any new variants that may pop up uh, in the meantime. So if you're thinking about coming here, I'm still saying play, play it safe and, and look at December. But uh, yeah, even that, you can't tell. There's nothing sure, uh, nothing sure. My crystal ball tells me don't buy any tickets yet. Hang on and wait. There's new vaccinations coming in. I'll talk about that on Sunday. There's been some breaches, of course, of the PPKM restrictions in terms of spas staying open and spas, um, in quotes, what a spa, uh, and people not wearing masks. Yeah, sure, uh, that is happening, and you see that more and more. So coronavirus fatigue, it's not just the physical being sick, it's the mental aspect of it as well, and the mental aspect extended into society, into culture. And so this is turning out to be uh, a new, more serious problem. And then we've got the issue about schools, and what about kids and not going to school? As I said, I've been trying to help my daughter, my granddaughter, uh, with her online schoolwork. Well. Uh, the other day I saw a notification that schools were opening in Banyuwangi and there's an article in Jakarta Post, some schools in Jakarta are going to open. And so schools are start, starting to open that, uh, in places with level three. So if we move to level three, will the schools open up? Um, because we have a question about not just the lack of knowledge, um, but the uh, emotional, um, the mental impact of not being in school for so long and going back to school. And there have been programs in other countries to help kids deal with this whole issue of not having been around friends, of, of not having been with teachers. How do they feel about the world where 
COVID, 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 they hear as my granddaughter says, COVID, 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 Grandpa. Um, are we going to have some programs here that are going to deal with that? Indonesia is not very big on dealing with mental health issues, unfortunately. Um, that's something I would like to see developed for teachers to talk about in the classroom. Um, we, as parents and grandparents, we need to talk about it with our, our kids at home. But also, uh, that's something that teachers can be dealing with when the schools open up, and I hope they open up soon. Okay, that's it. Um, a lot of stuff to do. Thanks for viewing. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Get vaccinated if you can. Um, I hope wherever you are, things are, are improving. Be kind to someone today. See you next time.